Hello, I'm going to be giving a tour of the latest Yamaha keyboard operating system and this wonderful touchscreen display that you see here. So as you would have noticed if you are the owner of a Yamaha Genos keyboard or a Genos 2 for that matter or one of the smaller versions the PSR SX700 and SX900 they all use a common operating system and it's mostly controlled around what you see here this fantastic full color uh, touchscreen display and I just want to give a tour just of this home screen uh, because it's a little bit like a portal into how your keyboard is currently set up and it actually displays a surprisingly large amount of information some of which you might have missed um, but to start with let's have a look at the most clearly visible parts uh, there are on the screen here they are helpfully color coded as well as you might have noticed um, the voices that is the big blue section along the middle um, and incidentally just because you can see them there uh, as you can see them illustrated there's a piano some strings and a guitar doesn't mean you can hear all three of them at the same time uh, in fact if I were to play the keyboard in this current configuration we would just hear piano and notice that we're not hearing the strings and nor are we hearing the guitars here that is uh, loaded up on the keyboard um, so what you can do uh, is load up those other voices well activate them using this little white button here that comes on do you see when I press it it says right two but right one was already configured there and already activated now that I've pressed right two what we're going to hear is piano and strings both at the same time okay and it's the same for button number three here that will activate a guitar so we'll have all three voices working uh, together um, now uh, just a quick note about this is uh, I wonder how many players of out there that are watching this have ever done this you've gone to activate or deactivate it and you've gone oh, oh I've accidentally loaded up this voice selecting screen it's because that particular button there the right number two is quite a, it's quite small isn't it it's quite difficult to get to uh, and it's sometimes you can just miss it or if you've got fat fingers then uh, it can make you accidentally load up the voice selection screen um, so what I'd advise is using um, the alternative which is the physical buttons here on the right hand side under voice select uh, if you see that I'm doing this here uh, you see how they correspond to right one right two right three and as I activate them using these lights here you see that they actually come on the screen as well uh, right one right two right three and incidentally if you want to actually go in and change right number two for example uh, you can actually press the corresponding black button above those parts as well so um, that's quite a useful way if you're if you if it if you're finding the screen a little bit fiddly then it's quite good to use those part select buttons just there so the main picture being displayed is um, merely for quick identification really uh, and illustrating which instrument you're using but I think it's quite nice to have a large graphic illustration of what you've got selected it's the kind of thing that should be done on a full color um, LCD screen such as we find on these keyboards um, above the illustration uh, you'll see the name of the voice selected in this case it's CFX Concert Grand Piano the default piano but just above that there's another piece of information that will say something like S Art or S Art 2. Um, not every single voice will display this, but uh, have you ever stopped to think about what that is? Well, that's what I'm going to explain now. If it's showing this S Art or S Art 2, uh, then it's likely going to be better, a higher quality voice than one that's not showing S Art 2, uh, or indeed just F S Art for that matter why exactly and um, this is because in real life uh, instruments for example strings guitars they don't just have a simple on and off 
Uh, anyone that's familiar with a guitarist, for example, will notice that there's a million different ways to attack the notes on a guitar. And indeed, there isn't just the pure guitar sound, but there's often things like uh, string buzz and fret buzzes and slides and all sorts of nuances and articulations that you can get. Um, and if your instrument says S art or S art 2 for that matter, then there are more of those nuances, those articulations built in there. That's what the art is for, articulation, and the S is for super. So it's using Yamaha's technology called super articulation. And um, addition upon addition of these keyboards, they keep improving them. So we've gone from S art to now S art 2, as you'll see on uh, many of the voices on here. And there's an important point about that as well, because often if you're looking at these keyboards from the SX700 at the beginning to SX900 Genos, Genos 2, one of the not so obvious but really important differences are is that the higher up the range you go, all the way to Genos 2, the more super articulation 2 voices there will be built into the keyboard by default. And what you'll find is when you load up the initial page of a voice category, that often you'll see them all put in there first, but if I was to do this on an SX700, there wouldn't be the SR2 voices, there'd be SR, or indeed they just wouldn't say that at all, they'd just be blank, like some of these ones here. Another thing to consider is when you realize that it's the voices, these very voices built into the keyboard that are the constituent parts of the styles, you understand how important it is to have high quality voices. Because when you hear strings in the background of an accompaniment or you hear uh, a nice saxophone playing in the background on a Genos or a Genos 2, you're hearing the S art voices. And of course, what does that do? It makes everything sound far more realistic and authentic. Now, coming back to our home screen here, um, another thing you might not realize is uh, if you wanted to change, I'll just change the initial voice back to piano again. If you wanted to change the secondary voice, all you need to do is press the secondary voice, just like that. Uh, and what that does, notice on the top left, it's now saying write to voice. And I've often had um, people that need help because they've perhaps gone in here and they've changed to a violin and they've gone to play and they're still getting a piano. And they're wondering, well, how come I'm pressing violin and I'm still getting piano? Have a look on the top left of the screen and just double check that you're changing the right one. Uh, that's to say, you're changing right one uh, rather than the right one. Here, we've got right two. So I'm changing that. I can change it to anything, but it's not activated. Again, look on part select here. The light is not illuminated, nor on the home page is the light illuminated here. So all I'm hearing is the single voice that is activated, which is piano. And incidentally, how do we navigate back to the home screen? You've probably noticed it, of course. On the top right-hand side of the screen, there is an X, and I can either press that, and it goes back to the home screen, or indeed, what I can do is these big white buttons here on the top right-hand side of the keyboard panel, one of those says home. If I press that, it takes us back immediately to the home screen. Okay, so the next category to have a look at here on the home screen is this big orange section, and this is where the styles are. Um, Let's have a look. So a nice big colorful section and it's displaying some other important information apart from the currently selected style as well, which I'll go into. Uh, firstly, above the main style name itself, and this one is Sky Pop, which is the default one when you turn the keyboard on. So this probably looks a lot like your keyboard at home. You might see the word, um, and I'm gonna load one up to illustrate this. You may well see the word session. There we go, look, just see it says Country Ballad 2, and just above that it says Session. It might also say something like Pro, or it might say something like uh, Free Play as well. Let's go and see one that says Free Play on it, there we go. So what this is doing is it's just illustrating the type of style that's loaded up here. And uh, what you need to know about this is that the style, the ones that have Session or Pro over the top of them, uh, tend to play a lot of additional um, patterns and the instruments within them will play different, mel um, different accompaniment patterns and the, some of them tend to be quite busy. 
Um, and the free play one, by the way, uh, is a one that won't play with any set tempo whatsoever. It really just follows you as you play. Now, the Session and Pro ones, as well as having these, um, the perhaps downside of having these extra um, patterns and things built into them is although it does make your accompaniment sound nice and full, if you're using the style for a particular song, um, a cover version that you wanted to play, it's not always suitable because it might detract from the original theme of the song, if, in particular if there's a real signature sound to it. What we find is most styles on the keyboard are kept relatively basic and tightly within the theme of the song you want to play um, in order to be useful for many, many different types of uh, song. So they give you a generic style and you can use it for different types of uh, songs. On the top right of the style, the orange style display section, there are three things here. You've got the time signature. In this case, it's 4-4 four, four time. You've got the tempo just here, indicated by a little note and an equal sign um, and a number. And you've got the bar indicator. So when the style is going along, you'll see that changing from one just so you can see where exactly you are in the bar. Um, pressing anywhere on the big orange section will take you to the style section, as you know, um, which we'll cover in a different video, where you can choose your desired style. Um, and as long as you've selected the preset section along the top of the screen, just here, on the left you'll see the style categories. The styles themselves, of course, are all displayed in the main section of the screen. Um, back to the home screen, the square box symbol to the left of the style, just here, uh, indicates the genre category that the style is from. In this case, it's jazz. So if I go to country and choose a different one, what we see is country there in that little black box. So it's quite easy to miss some of these little symbols um, unless you stop and have a really good look. On the top left uh, of the screen, you'll see a picture of a note and an equal sign and a number. And again, this is indicating the tempo of the selected style. Uh, quite useful to have it in contrast there. If you're playing a dark venue, then it's a little bit easier, or indeed a bright venue, it's a little bit easier to see it uh, replicated up there. Also, you'll see a few more numbers, which again, indicate uh, not just the beat of the bar you're on, and the, but the bar number that you've reached. And if you're performing a song, this is a useful piece of information to see, to know exactly where you are, for when that second chorus comes in or your big keyboard solo comes in. Uh, the narrow grey bar just below this, this one here, uh, displays the currently selected registration. Indeed, this is what you press. I know many of you are familiar with pressing the Regis Bank buttons together to go into registrations, but you can also, from the home screen, press the grey bar itself and you'll go to exactly the same place. At the top in the middle um, are four very narrow bars, um, which you may or may not have noticed. Um, the first of which at the minute is lit up orange. And this is a visual beat indicator to help keep track of what beat of the bar that you're currently in. Um, it's most helpful when you're changing between style variations as you can time the drum fill or change, uh, change the voices when you've got the OTS link on. So to give you a quick example, if I push start with this particular style, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you see, it's also replicated with the start stop button, which on the first beat of the bar always flashes orange as well. And when we're on a 4-4 four, four time style like that, you'll see it go all the way over the four little narrow bars. But if it's a waltz, a 3-4 time, it will only go up to the third one and then go back to the beginning again. On the top right of the screen, you'll see um, two little images uh, of a keyboard 
with numbers next to them. Most probably uh, yours is set to zero at the moment. Um, but again, they're quite easily missed, aren't they? And what is it that they're all about? Um, again, in the spirit of giving you as much information on the home screen as possible, uh, these indicate from left to right, firstly, the current keyboard's octave setting and the master transpose setting. So um, we've got the transpose button here and the upper octave here. And as you see, as I move these up and down, now what the upper octave is, is a way of playing the piano. Obviously we don't have the 88 keys of a piano here, um, which means that I'm missing a little bit off each end. But if I wanted to play in the lower register, I can move the upper octave down one. And this means that my, I'm now effectively playing lower down on a piano. So those high notes aren't accessible. Equally, if I were to move it up an octave, then I'm now playing a whole octave higher. And that's illustrated on the screen here now by doing press, showing as one rather than z minus one or indeed zero, um, which is its default setting. Incidentally, you might see me pressing these two buttons at once. This is a good rule for a lot of settings on this keyboard that when you press them both together, it resets to the default setting. And it's the same with the transpose as well. That's what's being illustrated here with this keyboard and little note. As I move it up, you can see it's going up and it's displaying temporarily in the middle of the screen as well, but that will disappear eventually. But again, the home screen is there to give you as much information about the setting, the setup of your keyboard all in one place. Uh, and also at the top right there, look, you've got the time as well, uh, which uh, I hate to tell you, looking at my watch is not accurate. Um, but you can set the time up on your own keyboard, um, at least Genos, by um, going into the settings as well. So in the middle of the screen here, um, below the blue voices, there is still a bit of space here where it says Song A and Song B. Um, this is a display of your currently selected MIDI and audio songs. Uh, on the MIDI section on the left, assuming you have a song selected, you'll be able to see the time signature uh, the tempo and the bar counter. If I just go in and, and load one of those up from the presets here, there it is. It's now displaying. So the home screen suddenly looks a lot busier because it's got all this information on it. A sky full of stars, 4-4 time, 125 beats per minute. And there's the bar counter as well, telling me the length of the song is 92 bars long and we're on number one at the moment and uh, it's showing MIDI there. Uh, incidentally, if you've got an audio song loaded, it won't display those information because the information like that is part and parcel of a MIDI file itself. It gives you all that, gives the keyboard all that extra information. Audio songs are a little bit different. They don't uh, it bring along that type of information. They'll just play, it'll just show the title of the audio song. Now on the bottom right of the screen, uh, there's a bluish colored section. Um, that displays the currently selected multi-pad pattern. So as you can see, the home screen is uh, it's very well laid out to give you all the pertinent informa information for how you've got your keyboard currently set up. Um, this type of display uh, is of course so much made so much easier because of the touchscreen system and the fact that you don't actually have to have corresponding buttons around the side of the screen like you did on the earlier versions of this called the Yamaha Tyros or even the earlier versions of PSR SX keyboards that had corresponding buttons, a little bit like a cash point machine around the screen. So it kind of limited what you could have displayed, but this touchscreen means that it's opened up for development and for showing you more information, therefore making your playing experience hopefully uh, a little bit more fun and you can navigate your way around a little bit easier. So to finish off, I want to cover um, an interesting piece on this screen, the last bit, that uh, the only bit I haven't got to so far, uh, which is particularly useful. Uh, and it's called the shortcuts menu down here at the bottom. Uh, there are six tabs with various bits of information on them. And it's likely that no two keyboards display exactly the same information down here. So don't be worried as if yours is not displayed, uh, not displaying the same things as our one here. But these tabs are shortcuts to various functional control pages within the keyboard, and they save you having to navigate through page after page after page after page after submenu, etc., etc., and work your way down. Um, they're there just so you can get to something very, very quickly. And you can customize it to uh, your own playing style. Indeed, if there's a function or a submenu you go to often, 
put it on the home screen and I'll show you how to do that. So what you do is uh, you press the menu button first of all up here um, and you need to find the one that says assignable here and it's on menu number one the bottom right uh, bottom left sorry when you load it up do you see that it says home shortcuts just there all right so what I'm going to do is because uh, I don't often use the demo that's on the home screen on the bottom right if I go into menu and assignable and from the home shortcuts I'm going to choose demo in the green writing and then it gives me a list of all the other stuff that I could put on there in fact I'll go for chord tutor because this is kind of a cool one that not everybody knows about if I load this up and then close when I come back to the home screen now what we've got on the bottom right is chord tutor there just waiting for me and I can open that up and incidentally this shows you how to play different uh, types of chords so if I wanted to know how to play a D uh, major seventh it shows you a picture on the keyboard there or an F with an added ninth it shows you on some a stave there as well as well as where to put your fingers but um, so that was in menu menu number one assignable and then you can change how your home screen looks let's take vocal harmony away and put in something else like chord looper that'd be a good one to have a quick access to uh, although genos 2 people will know of course that there's a new set of buttons on your keyboard where you have uh, a physical button for chord looper but if you're a genos 1 player and you want to get to the chord looper quickly um, you can do that you can just put it on your home screen there and there you've got quick access to your um, chord looper section so those home page shortcuts are really useful for you setting up the keyboard just how you like it so that's been a bit of a guide as to how to um, understand what's being displayed on the home screen of your uh, keyboard. I hope you found it useful. If you've got a question about something, just leave it in the comments section below. And uh, can we ask for your support by pressing the thumbs up icon below the video? It helps other Genos and SX players around the world see our videos. Thanks very much. See you in the next one.